We're having a little get together tonight. So I am on my way to the store. Well, actually I'm in the parking lot. And I am gonna go inside and get some charcuterie supplies. Charcuterie? Charcuterie supplies. And then I'm gonna show you how I make charcuterie trays. Okay, let's do this. All right, I have my list. Never go into a store without a list. So first thing I am going to get is some crackers. Any kind of crackers that you like will do for a charcuterie board. We usually like to look for something like an entertainment cracker sort of assortment. But since we're not having as many people over, we'll do a little, something a little bit more fancy. I've heard really good things about these crackers, so we'll give these a try. We're going to do the everything. We absolutely love these Triscuits, the, especially the balsamic vinegar and basil. These ones are buy one, get one free today, so we're going to get two because we'll definitely eat them. These next ones look really good. This is a great price, $2.69 for these types of crackers, and they're organic. Let's give it a try. All right, next up, we're looking for some salty goodness, a little bit of pickles, some olives. Let's have a look-see. We like these snack kosher dill pickles, and these ones are $2.49 when you buy four right now. So let me see if I can find a better price. Okay, so this store brand over here, this one is $2.49 when you buy one, so I'll get these. Next, we'll look at olives, and I'm actually going to skip olives today, but I do recommend these Kalamata olives if you're looking for some olives for your charcuterie board. Green olives are okay too, though. That's your cup of tea. Let's hit the veggies and fruits next. Ooh, look at these bell peppers. They look amazing. Normally, I go with a yellow or orange. The green tend to be a little bit bitter, so I'll stick to the sweeter options. Let's get this one. Gorgeous. I also love tomatoes for a charcuterie board. I usually try to look for something like this. The red ones are good, but they're not as sweet. So I'll go with something that's a little bit darker red, almost like a dark greenish red color. And if you can find the rainbow variety pack and it looks like it's in good condition like this one, that's what I would go with because then you can kind of get the best of all worlds here. Now on to the hummus. I like traditional hummus, but roasted garlic is also really good. I haven't tried this particular brand, but we're gonna give it a try. It's two for seven, so it's on sale and I love a good deal. Let's give it a try. Parmesan cheese is really good, especially if you break it down into chunks and whatever we don't use, I can just shred this and put it on pasta later. Now you can also go with an American grana or be really fancy and get Parmigiano Reggiano. And um, since we're having less company, I think I'm gonna get fancy. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this brand of Parmigiano Reggiano here. <laughs> Seven bucks, not too bad. And I can use the rest for pasta later. So a little bit of a splurge, but so worth it. Now, as far as the other cheeses go, just go with what your heart desires. <laughs> Whatever you like. They have a lot of fun cheeses like habanero cheese, sharp cheddar, horseradish. So you can really find all kinds of different variety. We usually like to just do a simple pepper jack cheese because everybody tends to eat that. So that and a cheddar, even though that horseradish looks fun. We're just going to do pepper jack today. When you're in this fancy cheese section, look up and you might see that they have a lot of recommendations for different types of crackers and sides or like these spreads or pastes. These are really good to go with crackers. They are $6.99 each, so I'm probably just going to pass today, but they are really tasty. If you can find a fig spread like this one, definitely give that one a try. So if you're looking to add meat to your charcuterie board, you can come to a section that looks like this. They have all different kinds like salami, prosciutto. You could even find all kinds of different brands of the same meats. So definitely take a look. Even pepperoni or pancetta would do whatever your heart desires. Today we're just going to go with pepperoni because we do have burgers on the menu tonight and whatever's left over of pepperoni we can make into pizzas. And if all of this extra shopping and planning is giving you a headache, you can look for these sets at your local grocery store. Sometimes they'll have something fun that has a variety of crackers, cheeses, meats. So you can definitely look for those if that's what you like. You could even go with a summer sausage or even slice your own salami. 
soft cheeses and cheese spreads are next and these can be really fun and easy they're not the best for you but hey it's a party so go crazy you can even get like a port wine cheese these are really popular at the holidays like around thanksgiving we're just going to go with laughing cow cheese today instead of a cheese spread or soft cheese because we already have that in the fridge Okay, this is what I've got, and this is by no means everything that I'm gonna be putting on the tray, so just wait until I get home, I'll show you what I already have on hand. So today after coupons and discounts, I spent $47.57, and I saved $22.10, because I had some really good deals. I also bought um, buns and some sliced cheese for burgers too, so a couple extra things. So first thing I do when I get home is I like to wash all my produce that I'm going to be using for the day and get everything prepped so that way when I go to make the charcuterie board later before everyone comes over, it's not a huge undertaking. So I'll be slicing the strawberries and washing the blueberries, putting those in airtight containers, and making sure that everything is just ready to go. And that includes tomatoes, give those a good wash, and then I'm also going to move on to slicing the cheeses as well. So I take my block of cheese and I'll just slice it into one eighth to one quarter inch slices. And then I'll be dividing those into three slices in this case because I want them to be perfect sizes for crackers. You can always get like a pre-sliced cheese and that could make your life easier. But I feel like the block cheese and cutting it yourself, it just tastes better. So you'll see that I just divide these here and then I'll put them in an airtight container for later. For this pepper jack cheese, I'm going to do things a little bit differently because it is a smaller block of cheese. I actually only have to slice this one like so. I don't have to divide it into thirds because it's the perfect size for crackers. If you're putting veggies on your charcuterie tray, make sure you slice them in a fashion that's easy for people to grab and dip into your hummus or your cheese spread or any of the dips and spreads that you have. That'll just make it easier for you to assemble it and for people to eat it later. When it comes time to assemble the charcuterie board, I get everything that I need ahead of time and place it out. So I've got all my little mason jars, little mini glass jars, and my fancy charcuterie board and parchment paper. This charcuterie board is actually from a friend of mine and she makes these and she can ship them. Uh, her business name is called Love Notes Calligraphy and you can see that on the back there. So awesome. I don't cut on this board because I love it so much. I only use it for display purposes. So first, I'm going to get my parchment paper. The reason why I use parchment paper is because it just protects the surface because I love this board so much. So it is totally optional. You can omit that if you have something that you use for charcuterie and don't mind kind of getting it messy or stained. So next I'm going to fill my containers. So first I'll do pickles. <laughs> you can overstuff this if you like. It's about presentation so you can make it really high and beautiful and if you overstuff it you won't have to fill it later. Next I'm going to fill this middle jar with hummus. I usually recommend filling your middle container with your dip or your soft spread because that will make it easier for everybody to get to. Now this next part, I'm going to actually make a little flower out of my pepperoni. This is totally optional. You can just roll up your meats and put them on the tray. That's fine. Some people don't like touching things as much. I wash my hands thoroughly. In any case, get yourself a nice glass here with a thin rim like a wine glass would do as well. And you're just going to overlap your meats like so and just go all the way around. And you can do like two or three layers or as many layers as you could possibly fit. That's totally fine. We just didn't have that much pepperoni. So I did as many as I thought that we needed. And just keep going around and press it down really firmly so that way it stays in place. And when you're all done, then you're just going to look all around the edges and make sure that you've got a kind of nice shape that you like. See how it looks kind of like flower petals and then we'll flip it upside down, twist it and push it a little bit so that way it doesn't stick to the glass and lift it and you'll see you have a nice little flower shape. Next you're going to want to move on to your cheeses and then your crackers because these are going to usually be the highlight of your board and you're going to want to have a whole lot of them on there and they take up a lot more space and take a lot more planning so I always recommend doing those ones first and you can always change your mind and move things later 
but the general rule of thumb is you want to have the same cheeses and options on both sides of the tray so that way no matter where anybody is standing they can get to that cheese or those crackers and again you can just play with this it's not it doesn't have to be professional it can just be whatever looks pretty to you i like to put a variety of different crackers stack them all up kind of like a deck of cards and spread them out and then you can see i kind of tuck them underneath the cheese there to give them a little bit more height Next, I'll put this laughing cow cheese. It's if you have like a soft cheese or a spread, this would be what you would be doing next with that because usually you want to put them on the edges so that way people can get to them a little bit more easily if they're lower. If they're in a container, you can kind of put them in the middle. Now we're just going to kind of readjust things and squeeze things in. So you're seeing that I'm just putting the crackers here behind the meats and just lifting them up and sort of displaying them against the glass jar in the middle there. So that way people can see them. And you can see that I kind of move things and replace them <laughs> a lot. That's just how it goes. You're going to place something and feel like it's not quite right. So when you make a board, don't stress like the final position of the cheese is going to change or the meats or the crackers. So just play with it and whatever you feel looks nice or you can even you know, squeeze things together a little bit closer, move them farther apart, whatever you need. And after that, then you're going to just start filling in the space with more crackers or more cheese and trying to kind of shove as many as you can. <laughs> here you can see I'm just using another cracker and filling in some of the empty spaces here with the larger crackers. And after that, then you can move on to putting some of your veggies and some of your smaller items in the empty spaces. Because you can see you can kind of stack these up higher on top of each other once you have just a smaller amount of space. So don't stress if it looks like you have barely any space left because the rest of the items should be a little bit easier to just kind of squeeze in wherever you find space. Feel free to put any of your glass jars up on top of the board or put them on the side as well. And next I'm going to move on to this Parmigiano Reggiano and just show you how I make the chunks. I just like to take a fork and push it into the cheese and you get these nice little bite-sized pieces. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to continue to use the fork in sort of a diagonal fashion so I can get these nice sort of chunky uneven pieces and make a nice little stack in one of the corners with this cheese. And that to me is the best way, especially if you're going to wrap meats around the cheeses and then put them on the crackers. It's a great little shape, perfect little bite-sized chunks, just like that. And these ones, since they're irregular and kind of bumpy like that and not all smooth, they're really easy to stack to in a big old cheese mountain. So that's one reason why I like to use this cheese too, because it looks really pretty and gives a little texture to the board as well. Next, I'm going to move on to the fruit. I have blueberries this time. I actually prefer blackberries, but you want to make sure that you try to get as much of the moisture off before you place them because you don't want to have soggy crackers just because the fruit was a little bit wet from when you washed them. So make sure they're very dry. And these are really nice though, um, especially little berries like raspberries or blueberries to fill in the space. And now of course I have to add sweets and chocolate. This brownie brittle is so good. It's just basically the edges of the brownie and you can just stack these in a huge stack on the edges and people just love to indulge after they've had their meats and cheeses on something sweet. Even if it's something like M&M's, which I'll show you in a minute, I'm going to use those too. They're left over from a party. That's what I love about charcuterie is that you can use whatever you have on hand. Like these butter cookies. They're so delicious and they're easy to stack and they just look really nice in a display. These ones are coated in sugar too, so they're even tastier and more beautiful. A little sparkle. I even added some chocolate kisses. Just anything that you have on hand really is perfect for a charcuterie board. So just use your imagination. A little bit of salty, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of decadent, a little bit of different textures. So if you have cold things or crunchy things, use all of the different senses that you have to put together a nice charcuterie board. Here's those M&Ms like I was telling you about. I just use a little plastic container to keep them contained and put them in one of the empty spaces there. Once you're all done, now you're just going to do the finishing touches by adding extra cheese or extra meats, crackers, stacking things a little bit higher, filling in all that extra space. So this is just the end where you feel like you want to add more so you don't have to refill later. <laughs> and then right before the guests arrive, that's when you want to open all your soft cheeses so that way they don't get 
sort of crusty before everybody comes. Put a little knife and make sure you have enough spoons and things. And you can even add some of your produce to the dips if that's what you like. It adds a little bit of color as well. If you have some things that just won't fit on your charcuterie board, that's totally fine. You can just put them on the side by putting them in a nice decorative glass container or a jar or even a glass. That's totally fine. Just put them right next to the board and they'll fit right in. Once you're all done, just do a last minute check in your pantry for anything else that you'd like to add. And there you have it. You are all done. You made a beautiful charcuterie board that doesn't have to be picture perfect, but all it really has to do is feed everybody and everyone is going to love it. Seriously. So delicious and perfect for parties and get togethers or even just for lunch. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you can get notified when I post. And please put down in the comments if there's something that you'd like to add to your charcuterie board. I'm always looking for tips.